previously on Balls. <laughs> All right, we're very really happy to be joined by the Springbok coach, Heineke Mayer, this afternoon. Heineke, how are it? Yeah, and selfs, man. It's lack on VM and Joe to Prat. It's almost like sometimes you get withdrawal symptoms going, where's the box coach? It's like quiet time, super rugby's on, but you're sort of behind the scenes keeping an eye on what's happening there, and I believe you had a really good day today. Yes, and first I prefer to be behind the scenes. I don't want the public ever to get tired of my face because I want to be in the light, in the light the whole time. So that's specifically done. I think it's important to super rugby. Mm. But I um, think that uh, it's great to get going with the team. I thought our, uh, our preparation was brilliant today. The players have really been awesome, you know, after a very hard derby. Um, for me, it was so great to see the players getting together. There's a great, great team spirit. And uh, it, was, it was actually mind-boggling to see how quickly they adapted to what we've done four, four months ago. So very happy mm-hmm. with the first day. Absolutely. Uh, just tell us a little bit about what you had them doing, uh, had them doing today. Yes, Dan, the, the, the most important thing is just to recap what we've done last year. So, you know, four months for some players is uh, it's been a long time. So, we, uh, we started with all the calls, going through the calls and writing exams about the calls. Yeah. And then we did a lot of video sessions about uh, our attack, our defense and, and our kicking game. And then today we, uh, you know, we went onto the, on the training field and, uh, you know, started with, the, with just the set plays and things we've done uh, four months ago. The whole main of thing of, or the, the goal of the first camp is just to, you know, revisit the things we've done. And the second camp, you know, we'll add some new things and work from that. There's some of the good things that come out of what you said, though, about having been such a good day and talking about the spirit is, first of all, we've just come off a weekend where there were two big derbies between two teams that uh, from a provincial point of view or franchise point of view aren't that fond of each other when it comes to playing each other so it's great that uh, they've left that behind on the weekend got together and uh, and the spirit is there and the second thing is uh, it's the first time and, and already you're seeing a semblance of a, of a kind of a bond in the in the box setup going we don't obviously know what the final squad is and the other side of it is also it brings the guys that are, must be chomping at the bit right now people like Bismarck who just want to get back into the setup and, and you know, feel part of it again after such a long break out, uh, that they're part of this as well. No, definitely. You know, I don't know how these guys get it uh, get it right. Um, you know, I, I watched the games this weekend and was at Newlands, and uh, I was so worried because of the injuries because they really killed each other. And guys like Peter Steph had, had mm. a lot of stitches, and then when they walk in here, it seems like they, you know, big mates and haven't seen each other. So I think the one thing we got right was uh, you know setting the right culture, and, and that actually put us through the end of the year too. And uh, it was it was just nice to see guys like Bismarck starting to train, and although there's a lot of injuries, uh, there's still enough guys that train. So yeah, it's really happy to see the, the guys keep going again. Yeah. One of the sides I haven't mentioned, and obviously, I mean, we don't uh, necessarily start asking about your selections, but uh, you must have been keeping an eye and must have been pleasantly surprised by some of the uh, guys, the way... Uh, we were talking to Dimitri Katrikilis earlier on, just about how impressively the Kings, in, in such a short space of time, have managed to build a kind of a bond and a unit as well uh, with the results they're getting. So, I mean, there must be one or two guys there that you're keeping an eye on. Yeah, firstly, uh, no, Darren, no, without sounding too clever, um, you know, I all thought they will do well. Mm. If you look at the Rebels and, and, and the force that started, you know, that was a start of right today. But if you look at that Rebels team, there's a lot of guys there that, that, that I've rated before and a lot of the guys I've coached, you know. Yeah. So uh, a lot of those players have played Super Rugby, uh, probably at other franchises and didn't, and didn't get uh, probably the amount of game time they would have liked. But at least they had some sort of experience. I think what they did brilliantly is, you know, to get them together and, and playing for a cause and you know you have a lot of so-called average players that's angry playing for each other and playing for a cause you know it's a difficult team to beat I think they've got a they've got a good coaching staff going there and uh, they've got a big pack of force a, a very good defense and a kicking team and then you know if, if you have that going with a, with a great, great team spirit you can win games and they show that mm. on the uh, on the side of personnel that you've got um, you must sort of sit through Super Rugby obviously with your short list in each position obviously with combinations with a view as well just how how has the have have the injuries that we have suffered affected you in that way? Are you happy that in every position and with a view to the combinations you might want to be looking at for certain games, that there's still enough depth for you to be comfortable comfortable with what you got? Yeah, I think uh, I think because we had a bigger squad last year, all the injuries and a lot of guys were, were had to have a big squad, and uh, so I think in that regard um, we covered. But I think we're not covered is the experience. You know, we've lost a lot of experience, and Andres is going now, and John Ray and Mornay. Um, you know, that's not the ideal situation because I don't want to build every single year. So there's a lot of great players leading as well. So although there's although there's depth, um, you know, last year with lack of experience, it showed away from home, 
and uh, it's a pity that few of the senior players are, uh, are leaving as well. Mm. But I think what's been great is that you know guys like Arnold Stiles is going to be as a leader, and I think John is going to be a flexible captain, and uh, you know Brian and a lot of other guys put their hands to this as well. So although we've got, I'm quite happy to get to certain positions, uh, we lack a little bit of experience in those positions. All right, what's uh, what's up next now? What's what's the next step? Yeah, we, we, we finish tomorrow because we also realize that it's, it's super rugby and, uh, you know, they've also got a competition to win. Yeah. So, uh, but what I think what's been great is uh, our planning's been much better than last year and uh, we also start to communicate with the players via internet and via email and uh, we're busy looking at We can also send them stuff and so they learn things beforehand. So, it's just a matter of revisiting them and I think the thing that the location team has got right is visiting the franchises. You know, we gave our input there. So, uh, planning-wise, uh, you know, there's a lot of working togetherness and uh, helping each other and I think the way that has been uh, in, probably at the end of last year even so mm. well it's nice to have had a bit of a run in this year to be able to get it all planned and, and ready so uh, that uh, I think it's a big difference whereas last year it was sort of dropped on you and you had to almost play a test in a few weeks time Yes, you know, um, if you look at last year, a lot of the systems were still involved in Super Rugby, so we couldn't really plan. But by saying that, you still have to go out there and win the first game, and uh, although we're going to have one day now and, and one uh, one more day, it's still not enough because uh, I think people will underestimate uh, the likes of Italy and Scotland. You know, they've beaten France and, and Ireland. They were third and fourth in the, in the, in the Six Nations. So uh, that's a big challenge for us. So although we're going to have two days, we still only get together on the Monday before the first test. So it's always a challenge that first test, and then hopefully can build some momentum going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, at this stage, it's just great to hear that there's a great hear song as the guys. Uh, I think it's one of the first uh, first things you want to see when the guys get together. So, good news. Good luck for the rest of it, Anika, and we look forward to chatting again sometime. Thanks for giving us some time this afternoon. Thank you, Anika. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to you guys. Bye, Anika. Cheers, Anika. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. There we go, Anika Mayer. Joining us this afternoon on Balls Visual Radio. Thanks, Johnny. That was nice. Yeah, thanks, Darren. Nice to chat to the coach. As slowly we start to, uh, yeah, I mean, he's been very much low key. Yes. And that's why I let the Super Rugby happen and he's making his notes and checking out players and stuff like that. Getting his teams together. I must admit, let's look at what he's got there with all the injuries and stuff that we've got and saying, this, our rugby depth very healthy, which is good. This is Balls Visual Radio. Darren, Simon, Kate, and John. Weekdays from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central African time. Balls.co.za.